Hey right, bags, it's Jade with another ultimate guide, this time the ponds. Absolutely every milk molar you can find in and the surrounding edges. Every scab, every upgrade, how to get quite armor, how to get the two burgle chips that you can find and pretty much getting you in readiness for 1.0 in case you've still got some stuff to do or you're picking up grounded for the first time. This guide should be valid other than a few locations that may be changed, giving us access to the upper yard in future. And of course, I'll have brand new guides for that as well. So make sure you like if you find it useful and let's go. So first things first, we need to get ourselves the dagger. This is the only items that you can use to chop resources inside the pond water area itself. You can attack creatures with spears, so you will also need a spear just in case to defend yourself against some of the wolf spiders and take care of any of the other creatures. Gather a bunch of algae, kill as many of these creatures as you can, at least two or three tadpoles to get some of the meat, as it's pretty good once you've cooked it to replenish your health, and you will need it for also some of the bait that can help against some of the spiders in the water. You'll be grabbing the lily pad wax from underneath the lily pads obviously, and it comes in bunches of either one up to maybe five. Scanning lily pad wax unlocks the slime lantern, the peplic dagger, and fin flops, and if you've got up to brain power level four, you'll also unlock the gill tube. In progression terms, it feels like the pond is the one you should do after the hedge as it's the next level set of unlocks that will help you most. You will need a slime lantern. You can go ahead and craft a whole bunch of the slime stalk ones, but they just don't last as long as these. Then you head back to the water to go ahead and grab some of the eel grass with your new pebblet dagger that you crafted once you've gone and analysed some of the algae and the other items. Harvesting this will go directly in your inventory and sometimes some pieces do drop as well as extra so look out so they don't sink to the bottom. Two lily pad wax, four eel grass and two silk rope. That's what you'll also need for the gill tube and it's definitely recommended that you have at least that and the pebblet dagger. The fin flops are a nice little bonus if you manage to kill four of the boatmen. A bonus to killing these guys as well as the water bell spiders is they replenish your oxygen when doing so. However, if it's too much effort killing them, you can actually get a rotten pair, but you will have to quickly deal with a waterbell spider. Go to this location here on the map, pretty much on this lily pad, and dive down. You should find a cave not too deep down, and in here you will find mushrooms that you can harvest with a tier 2 dagger, and you will also find 500 raw science. Chances are though, you might find this a bit difficult if you haven't got the gill tube at least. So maybe get the gill tube, then come in here and then get the rotten flip flops. They will still give you the benefits of being able to use it underwater for the same amount of time. It's just slightly worse in terms of resistance with only 2% instead of 2.5. So we're actually gonna start with the pagoda. There's a resource scanner up above the surface of the water, which is useful as well as some points. We'll show you that in a second, but you wanna actually swim down underneath. Some tadpoles will be guarding an entrance hatchway, and this is the thing that's most likely to change for 1.0. I'm predicting that this will be a way up into the upper pond area, or possibly another laboratory with the full game release. For now though, it's worth coming in here to get the 100 science points and some upgrade materials with style nuggets. This is also where you can reliably find some of the water fleas, again needed for some of the bait. The only creatures you really have to worry about are the diving bell spiders that could take a significant chunk of your health, especially if you haven't got a shield or anything to block it with. Next, at the back of the pagoda, you should now be able to climb up a stick, go and get the science points, and scan any of the other new resources that you've just managed to get. There's 100 science points just in the top here, which you can grab hold of, as long as your parkour skills are a little bit better than mine. And just outside the pagoda, facing the rest of the yard, you should find another 100 raw science next to the coin. There is a mega milk molar all the way in the corner here as well. I'll show you the outside locations towards the end of the video. And you're good to go to explore the rest of the pond. I would recommend a clover poncho to help reduce your hunger need, or preferably for more armor against the actual water bell spiders, actually the bee armor set, the rotten one. You should have the flip flops on and you should have the diving tube as well. So you want to hop into the water, mix up some of your mutations. You will get a team one, which will give you a bit of extra oxygen while you're exploring eventually but otherwise i would go for something that gives you extra stamina for now like cardio fan just between all the lily pads and the pagoda if you swim all the way down you want to be following any of the oxygen bubbles you will run into some of these spiders and like i said three or four swipes of your pebblet dagger should be enough to take them out or you could use a spear but they are more susceptible to slash damage these guys can sense you from quite a far away, so it can be useful to use either the bait to throw it off the way. 
But to be honest, you're pretty much okay to swim past them, especially if you have got the flippers on you as well. And like I said, don't forget, they do give you oxygen replen when you've killed one. So you want to be heading for this cable and the bubbles coming up. And you should be able to get plenty of oxygen as you're going down before finally getting and exploring the T-Rex. The T-Rex has got the stinger spear in his mouth, so we'll get that in a second. But what we're really looking for is bone pieces. Although you will find enough bone pieces to help upgrade a peblet dagger to the bone dagger as we explore more, it's still worth gathering some of these stuff right now. Obviously the koi fish scales are here as well and this is the only place that you'll find both of these. You won't find it in the larger areas of the pond, just in the deepest trenches. So this way your slime lantern will come in handy or your 20 slime stalk torches that you might have made. It takes two swipes to dig up one koi fish, one swipe to dig up one bone. There should be a hundred raw science just underneath the sunken T-Rex and here is the stinger spear. Pretty much the equivalent to an upgraded level 5 normal spear, so it's definitely worth using for now. So once you've gathered some of them resources and you're ready to go, you can then go ahead and go deeper into the cavern. You should be looking for the jets of water that will push you forward. They will do the work for you and you're pretty much at the underwater laboratory. Now you need to swim directly towards this entrance that I'm going. Even with the diving tube, it's still a bit of a challenge getting here without your breath running out. It can also be hard actually telling if you're swimming fast or not, so pay attention to the bar and make sure that you are clicking it to go quicker. Head to the right inside this broken part of the laboratory and it will eventually go into a resource room, much like the hedge, filled with goodies that we'll be able to use to make some stuff to help us. There is a biometric scanner here, so make sure you tab this and don't worry, you're about to breathe fresh air as soon as you open it and go through the door. There will also be a sleep point here, so make sure you use it, and this helps make this dungeon actually pretty easy to do, even if you die. So first you need to reset the breaker, then we need to go and turn on all three of the switches to give power back to the laboratory. Once you've done that, then we need to go through the next door, and we're going to be taking on a Arc R. These guys do significant electrical damage if they do their kind of power attack, but otherwise it's just like the rest of the robots, keep them at bay, with usually smashing damage is better, but whatever you've got to hand really. In my instance this was my upgraded spear. Again they should take extra damage from behind, but otherwise steer clear of that attack especially. They do fire their static balls which can be a bit of a problem to dodge, but as long as you're moving in circles around him as best you can, or you block, you should be able to avoid most of them. Just look out that they don't rebound and get you on the way back. These guys also give you a hundred raw science when you've killed them. This is the furthest you can go at the moment. It's got a crafting bench, some bandages, and the respawn point. Make sure you use it. So here is, depending on your experience, where things will differ. If you're experienced with grounded, you're going to try it without maybe some of the extras that are going to help, like a bubble helmet, which is the tier 2 diving helmet, or maybe liquid gills, which is a smoothie that's going to give you lots of oxygen. Liquid gills is the easiest to make as you only need pretty much one of the water flea meat and one tadpole meat, as well as some eel grass. The bubble helmet requires five bones, as well as some other resources. Like I said, I'm doing this without the bubble helmet, but I just wanted to show you guys there is extra help if you find it a bit difficult or you're not really a fan of being underwater. So anyhow, swim out the corridor and then follow the broken laboratory here directly forward and you're going to be looking for an entrance that will take you further. Now this corridor is probably the toughest part of the pond getting this right. There's going to be an air vent that's pushing water out or oxygen out and it can stop you from getting to the next part. You can do this even without the flippers but it does rely a really good lot on big timing. And once you made it through then you need to swim into this area here and then go ahead and turn on the switch. There is a milk motor to get as well as a scab but we're going to do that a bit later on when we've got more oxygen or we're not having to put the switch on. The air is still pushing so it should give you a bit of a speed boost out and then you've got to simply go back to the laboratory entrance that you was just at. It's super tight as you can see I just about only made it there. So that's why you either need some liquid gills or go ahead and make sure you've got the tier 2 diving helmet. But if you do die like I said you will only respawn here and you've got your equipment back on you so it'd be nice and easy to go and get your stuff back. So that is switch number one let's turn on the other two. 
This time when you come out, actually swim back towards how you got into this cavern where the air was all pushing you. And you should find the other switch pretty much underneath the moon pool that we're going to have to enter once we've turned on all three switches and turned the breaker back on. There is a ton of bones as well as some of the koi pieces in the ground below us, but we're going to get them later. Once again, head back over to the laboratory where we've been saving our point from. And then this one is where you might want to use some of the bait as there is a couple diving bell spiders. Swim directly across towards the other side following the oak branches and yeah, you might get attacked by them. Otherwise, you should just about be able to swim past them, make sure you've got some sort of healing item on you and go ahead and turn the switch. You can do it pretty quickly and you should be able to swim back no problem. I just about did it and only took a little bit of damage from the diving bell spiders. So head out of the laboratory area again into the opening and then straight into the moon pool which the doors will now open. In a moment you're going to have to fight a Arkar as well as some more tasties but for now you should be okay. Head through the open door that's green, 100 raw science and turn to the left and we're going to go and pick up a few bits before going through a little small underwater segment. Some backstory and to the left of this module you'll also find a chest. So now we go further in and there should be a pool of water with a slope. That's where we need to get through. So this is going to be underwater section. There will be a diving bell spider in here. So you may want to make sure you've got your weapon out and obviously some sort of lighting. There's quite a few bits of tough rock just laying on the ground as well as some chests with it inside as well. So make sure you grab these. And then you're kind of looking better in first person actually for the little entrance way that you can swim up into the next section. Grab the other two tough rock nuggets and then go through where it's got the roots. In the clay below this, there is a scab. This is why you need to bring a spade, obviously, not just for getting the other resources. And this should be the scab ginger spice. And it's got a nice ginger blue quality to it. Keep swimming through and yeah, you should see the diving bell spider. Now you can pretty much just ignore him, but again, he does give you a little bit of vital oxygen. But this is a small section, so you should pretty much be able to go through it without really needing him unless you haven't brought enough torches, that's why it's crucial you've got enough light. I would say two slime lanterns would be good enough. There is a rotten version which I'm going to show you how to get towards the end, but otherwise, yeah, take care of him and keep swimming through the debris. You'll see a path upwards, swim towards this, and we're going to turn on another switch that will access the doorway and it will give us access to the next part of the laboratory. Don't forget also to get some more of the granola bars. And yeah, flip switch and that's it. You can move out of here. You go past some more backstory folder as well as some style nuggets. The doorway should be open now and lead you back to the junction that you was originally in and you can head back to the main chamber of the laboratory. The wall that you saw there going down, that just leads you to the resource room that we was in earlier, the underwater one. So now we've got to take care of these guys and they can be pretty tough. You want to separate these two from the main arc R1 as best you can. Just keep running around as they are a little bit quicker so they should follow you a little bit more. It's quite a bit of a challenge but make sure you use the moon pool to circle around and get yourself some distance away from them. And mainly because they're a little bit quicker, I would probably try to take them out first as you usually encounter them first before taking on the arc R. We've only got a few more of these to deal with, in fact, in the next part, and we should be safe enough in the underwater laboratories for a while. So one of the doorways will be open now, that's where they came from. It's just an empty room, nothing inside it. And then you want to head for the other door that you haven't explored. There should be some boot prints that will lead the way and follow the path up. There'll be some more bandages on the table, as well as some more granola bars, and we're in the main laboratory point now. We're going to turn on the power. Take care of these two tasties. I generally like to get to the end point with them and then just sling whatever weapon I've got. On one of the walls you should find this shallow scab, which as you would imagine is quite blue and sort of yellow. There should be a research terminal over on this side as well, so you go ahead and scan even more of your new items you might have got, especially from that resource room. And maybe the more exciting stuff is the Koi armour. Another tough nugget on this terminal and there should be a chest with more tough nuggets and style nuggets plus more backstory. And simply go up the ramp and you should be able to see all of the muscle sprouts. These are gonna make your smoothies super duper. They basically give you more healing when you consume them, as well as whatever other bonus you've got. So instead of using just bug goop, you'll use these too. You'll more than likely have too much in your inventory, so you might wanna come back here a couple of times and there will be a quick and easy way to get into this laboratory now that we've gone and pressed the button to open the dome doors as well as got the pond burgle super chip. 
Now this is the main story chip that you need to progress the story, but there is another chip that you might find useful as well, which I'm going to show you guys. But the unlocks you get for this one are the Buoyant Foundation, 2500 Raw Science, Curve Bases, 2500 Raw Science, Cookbook for the Pond, which gives you free recipes that are all designed to help you in the water, Boatman Fin Soup, Spaghetti Flea, and Tad Paloka Pudding, one of the most newest two to be added to the game. Also another sign set, this time science for 4,000 science points and the pollen turret, which also costs 4,000 science points. So this is probably a good time to leave. We'll go and craft some more upgrades and then we'll be able to explore more of the pond, making life a lot easier. So if you follow these doorways in, there's another 100 raw science, some more of the style nuggets, and then just simply drop down inside this opening here. So by now, discovering all them places, you should probably have unlocked one of the mutations, the Murti mutation. You've basically got to discover three underwater areas and it gives it to you. It will give you 10% pretty much reduction on oxygen and it will also increase your swim speed by 15%. Simply go up the corridor through to the top of the pond and you can return to Burgle, give him the chip and see what else you need to get upgraded. I wholly recommend getting the bone dagger, two sunken bone, two silk rope and two diving bell chunks. Even if you hadn't killed any, there should have been some in the sunken resource room. If you've managed to get enough resources to go ahead and make the bubble helmet, you might as well use that as well. But otherwise, head back to the hatch, which is on the far sort of northern side of the pond, pretty close to the actual dome itself, and you can swim back to the area and grab any of the mussel sprouts that you maybe missed. So now we're going to return and get some of the other bits we need and we're going to be getting the sunken outpost chip. We need a key to open up a chest. So head to where we dropped off to go and get all the free buttons and head towards this air vent that's pushing you. You should be able to swim just past it or just underneath it and there should be a tiny little tunnel. This is filled with diving bell spiders. So I'm going to speed up the footage here just a little bit to help you out. But you can't really lose or go in the wrong way as it's just one long corridor. You'll get to a main chamber that's got some air coming out of the split pipe and obviously you can still kill the spiders to get some air too. And the key we're looking for, the mossy key, should be pretty much in the coils of the pipe. I would say try and take care of them so they don't disturb you too much and then go ahead and get the key itself. There's a few pebbles but nothing really else here, just grab the key and then get out. If you run in low on air you can head to the moon pool door and jump out that way. Once you sort yourself, head back towards the T-Rex through these caverns, making sure to avoid the air that's going to push you, and you're looking for the chest that is below one of the air push vents. A mega milk motor, and obviously the chip, and we're nearly ready to leave. But just before you do, head up over to the right hand side of the cavern when facing the main pond lab. You go ahead and use your bone dagger to break through the soggy roots and get another mega milk. So you'll pretty much find a diving lantern upgrade for 1500 raw science, fin flops upgrade for 1500 and the splat burst bomb for 2500. These all exponentially increase obviously the use out of them, they give you more faster speed and your diving lantern will last a lot longer. In times past during early access I would have said they weren't really worth it as you don't spend that much time in water but with 1.0 offering new water areas to explore it's definitely worth getting now. Anyway, I'll put that there just to show you the unlocks from it, but let's carry on getting some more resources as we've still got a bit to do to get all the scabs and more raw science. So you are going to need a big ton of the koi scales, so you want to dig up as many as you can while you're in this area and just keep going back up and down to the moon pool whenever you're running low on oxygen. There's an air vent that shoots you directly up so it's quick and easy and obviously get as many of the bone pieces as well. Amongst all the wreckage, you will find a bolt here just underneath is a scab. This is muck, and as you would imagine, the colours are pretty horrible. Once you're absolutely full of all your resources, we're actually not going to swim back up through the shortcut where the dome is. We're going to carry on going down the cavern this way. Back to the very first button that we turned on, past the air vent, obviously when it's blowing, it should be a little bit quicker and easier to get to now you've got your upgrades. And again, you could have took the time to go and make the bubble helmet before doing all of this. Inside, opposite this little corridor here, you'll find the frostbite scab, which is pretty nice and blue. Then go into the main chamber with a switch and you should be able to cut through the soggy roots to get yourself a regular milk molar. Let's dive back in and go the opposite direction of the T-Rex, towards the other end of the massive cavern, past where you just went and got the frostbite and the milk molar from. And you want to be aiming towards the ceiling, as there is another small air vent or laboratory entrance to go into. 
It can be pretty tough to spot, but it should open up after a few seconds and you're in another closed area. I think this area might change in the future, but you get the Holly Dazzle Scab, which is kind of like an orange and maybe green. Plenty of Style Nuggets, Tough Nuggets, as well as some Koi Scales. And more backstory. Now when you get to the other side, there'll actually be a doorway that you can press open and this unlocks another part that you can access from the surface pretty much. But you can't really go through the door until you've come the way that we've just done. So that's why I recommend you do so. It does feel a bit unfinished this area. I don't really see too much of the point of it. So I'm guessing it will change for 1.0. But there you go, jump in and you should come out into the top part of the pond and the surface. But we still got to do a few little more bits. There's a few more raw science to get on the way out. So I'm going back the way we came. And this time we're going to carry on going here towards the darkest areas. Get some more of the Koi Scales. Avoiding a couple of Bell Spiders that are in this location still as well. And you should see some raw science to help guide you if it's pretty dark. Keep heading towards that and you know you're going in the right direction. Once you've gathered it, you should then be able to see maybe some vines or some of the underwater bushes and again keep following it up and the rise up and that is the way out. This will take you to the northwest part of the pond pretty much close to the Franken line. Well, there's another hundred science points that might as well gather here by the eaten leaf and then you can swim up from what needed oxygen. Next we're going to be going over to the blue net that's inside the water. Jump in and you want to be hugging the left hand side. We're looking for the tiniest smallest entrance to a cave as that's going to lead to the ant abomination as well as some tier 3 tough rocks and star rocks. So you will need the tier 3 items, the hammer to break them open. So it's not really necessary right now but I figure it's worth chucking in since we're covering everything to do with the pond. You'll know you're going the right way as you'll see loads of ant heads. It's extremely dark in here so you probably will need some sort of light unless you've boosted your gamma all the way up. So yeah, like I said, you'll be back here once you get a tier 3 hammer, but for now you can grab the abomination totem recipe and get out of there. Head back towards the net and actually underneath it you should find a half sunken log or piece and there will be a milk motor as well as some more science points. Now I was kind of just finishing off all the other spots, so I was swimming back and forth across the pond. You should see the sunken pot. It's worth noting all these because it allows you to, like I said at the beginning of the video, to get the team pretty easy. You'll also get 500 raw science of course and then we're looking also for one more location which will be the wedding ring. This should be just past the actual flower pot underneath a big rock. Apparently this belonged to Trudy, Wendell's wife, but she threw it in the water when she left him. And supposedly the koi fish ate it and that's why Wendell tried to get it out of him but the koi fish managed to slip and that's how it lost one of its eyes. There is another unfinished laboratory here. Whether or not it's always meant to be this way, waterlogged and maybe not complete, I do believe in the future it will be finished. There'll be more to do here. It's directly underneath the oak tree pretty much, so you wouldn't have too many problems finding it. All that's inside though is 100 raw science and a couple pieces of tough rock. At this point I finally caved and went and got myself the bubble helmet to make life easier as we only really need to explore two more caves and the pond is completely done. Near the shortcut where you actually go back into the dome area of the pond, you notice I'm just giving you some sort of indication on screen where it is, there will be a leaf that you can get 100 raw science. Opposite the pond, go over to this orange leaf, you should have pagoda on your left hand side and the oak tree more or less in front of you, just on this spot here. So hop back in the water, swim all the way down, following the air bubbles that are coming up. You should see a split pipe obviously, and then you're looking for that small entrance way. In fact, it should be just above the very ground here, and you can see it's here, and this will lead you to another milk molar. There's nothing else in this room other than an absolute ton of algae. And then we're at the final, final cave. Directly underneath the oak tree, there's this large cavern you can find, or you can go through the actual laboratory, through the broken glass, and when you dive into the water, there'll be a small hole. I prefer going this way though, as it gives you more reason or chance to fight the little spiders you're gonna come across. That's pretty tough in here. For some reason, I got my butt kicked the first two or three times, so I had to either keep reloading or keep respawning. There are some nuggets that it's worth getting, and there's a big 500 raw science. But taking this approach does mean that you will be able to hopefully lead one away and fight them one at a time. Take care of these two bozos and then you can go ahead and get the science points as well as another mega milk. Also if you pay attention there should be a couple pieces of tough rock on the floor that you'll be able to see as well. Grab this next mega milk and then we're going to carry on going further into this underwater cavern corridor area. 
So you're looking for the crevice, it's kind of slightly up towards the ceiling. Keep swimming through and you should find another style nugget on the left hand side here. And then you should go past another milk molar that you need to hack away at to get. Keep swimming and you should find another style nugget underneath the roots. And then you've got two ways to go. Follow the way with the raw science. You'll come into quite a large chamber with a bag in it. This is where you get your venom arrows as well as five feather arrows too. Obviously you can take him out if you need some more oxygen Then swim back to the fork and take the other direction. You should come across the rotten slime lantern inside this broken part of the laboratory, some more style nuggets and another hundred raw science. There is also another scab in this location too. It can be pretty tough to spot but you're looking directly underneath the lab wreckage and that's where Shine Bright should be, which has got a bit of a dark blue yellow scheme to it. Now you can kill him or you can hurry up and find the entrance. You're looking towards the ceiling and then just keep swimming up and it should take you up into the Oak Laboratory. And then like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, all the other locations just on the outside edges of the pond. Head over to the far upper yard's pond wall near the fence post and you'll find this milk molar guarded by a whole bunch of orb weavers so look out for them. On the far side of the pond, directly opposite the oak tree and close to where you've got these big massive plants, you'll also find another milk molar. Amongst the tree roots that come in and out of the water, you'll find a small one here that has got the scab panfish. It's pretty yellow, orange and beige. And perhaps one of my favourite scabs, I'm not kidding, is Billy Dog Horror although they might change the name slightly, let's have a look, as you find it inside the coda can near the overturned pot. Look out for all the mosquitoes that will be guarding it. The most horrendous red and yellow you'll ever see. And technically, I guess, with the pond, inside the overturned pot, there will be 100 raw signs. So there we go, absolutely everything I could think of you need to know about the pond and the pond area. Didn't mention too much about the koi fish, but obviously it's pretty deadly if it gets close to you. The actual armour that you can make is fantastic for players that really aren't good at perfect blocking as it increases the window for the perfect block, making it much easier. And being a light armour, it's pretty good for also stamina use. You also have a chance to do a dazzling repost, which is meant to make creatures, I think, run away from you. At the moment, I wouldn't really bother with the trident. It's just not worth it at the moment. There's better weapons out there, but you might need it again in the future as it looks likely to be more creatures and more stuff coming with the 1.0 in the upper yard pond. So of course, look out for that fresh guide to go and check out all the other Ultimate 1.0 guides I've been doing and I'll see you right back some more very soon. Bye-bye.